Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm excited tonight that uh, God has got present truth through the spirit of revelation. We're coming to you uh, live from Miami, Florida, Apostle Angel Gutierrez. Um, hallelujah. Uh, All Nations Destiny International. And, and tonight we're excited because this is the fifth part of a teaching that God is really more than a teaching. It's a revelation. Uh, of, of the move of God that's happening right now, uh, that's breaking out in our midst as we're uh, uh, being uh, re revealed the present truth, amen? Uh, as Paul uh, tells Peter to be renewed in present truth. Um, and we know that God is doing new things. The Bible says, uh, forget the former things and know, hallelujah, hallelujah that God is getting ready to do a new thing. He's actually doing it now. Amen? So we thank God tonight, and we want to go to the Word tonight, um, and we're going to continue um, teaching and imparting uh, the revelation of the glory of God. Amen? And I remind you uh, what we read in the book of Hab Habakkuk. Amen? And we're going to start in chapter 2, verse 14. And it says, For the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. And we were explaining that in this last hour, in this last season, amen, that we're going to be, uh, God is going to fill the earth with the knowledge of the glory of God, amen. And not, not only just to feel the presence of His glory, but to be able to actually move uh, with the revelation of God, Amen. Uh, in the glory of God. And, and we had talked about the wisdom keys, the keys of moving in this glory. And we find that in the book of Ephesians chapter 1. And it says, hallelujah. And this is exciting. Um, it says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Wisdom, revelation, and knowledge. Amen? And it says, The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that ye may know what is the hope of His calling. Amen? And what the riches of the glory of the inheritance of the saints. Amen? Uh, not only know what the hope, the hope is Christ. Christ in us, the hope of glory. Amen? And, and what is the exceeding greatness of His power to us, towards us who believe according to the working of His mighty power, which He wrought in Christ when He raised Him from the dead and set Him at His own right hand in heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this world, but also in the one which is to come. And He has put all things under His feet and gave Him to be the head of, over all things in the church, which is the body, the fullness of Him that filleth all in all. I mean, there's a revelation here at the very end, which is the, His body, which is us, the fullness of Him that filleth all and now. Now, if God is um, going to fill in this last hour the earth with His knowledge, He's going to fill the earth with His glory. But here it says the body, the fullness of Him that filleth all in all. So Christ in us, Colossians 1 27, the hope of glory. And, and if you would ask me, Apostle, uh, what is going to be this last move of God? Is it going to be a teaching move, an impartation move, a prophetic move, an apostolic move? No, it's going to be a move of Christ. It's going to be the glory of God. It's going to be the full manifestation of God manifesting in His remnant bride in the church, the fullness of all in all. Amen. The Bible also says in the book of Ephesians that in the last, in the fullness of the dispensation of time, Christ himself will gather all things unto himself, which is the church. That's why he's the head of the church. We're being the, we're the body, amen, the, which is filling all in all. The knowledge of the glory of God is going to cover the earth, amen, as the waters cover the sea. The book of Amos says, in the last days there'll be a hunger, hallelujah, not for bread, not for meat, but for the presence of God, hallelujah, hallelujah. Uh, Isaiah uh, 54 says, come to the waters, those who hunger and thirst, come buy bread and wine and oil, hallelujah, because if you have the hunger, 
Hallelujah. And you're willing to press into God and you're willing to, to, to lay your life down in obedience unto God and render everything unto God. Hallelujah. Then God is going to fill you with his glory. Christ in us, the hope of glory. His body filling all in all. That's a very powerful revelation of the word of God. Amen. And we go over to Isaiah chapter 40. Amen. And it says here in Isaiah chapter 40, Comfort ye, comfort ye, my people, says your God. Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem and cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished, that her iniquity is pardoned, for she has received of the Lord hand double for all of her sins. The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted, every mountain shall be made low, and the crooked places made straight, and the rough places made plain, and the glory, hallelujah, listen to this, and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And, and here in verse 9, it says, O Zion, that bringeth good tidings, get thee up into the high mountain. O Jerusalem, that bringeth good tidings, lift up thy voice with strength, lift it up. Be not afraid, say of the cities of Judah, Behold your God. Behold, the Lord will come with a strong hand, and his arms shall rule for him. Behold, his reward is with him, and his work is before him. Hallelujah. 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 And the Bible also says that he gives power to the faint, to them that have no might, he increases strength. Hallelujah. And the youth shall uh, faint and be weary, and the young men shall early fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Amen. They shall mount up with the wings of eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Amen. But we see here that God, the glory of the Lord, shall be revealed. Amen. It's a knowledge of the glory of God. It's God, Christ himself, filling all in all. He uh, totally uh, embodying the life of the sons of God. Amen. That's the move of the glory of God. Amen. Is there going to be a prophetic uh, uh, move of God? Of course there's going to be a prophetic move of God. But the, 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 the greatest move of God is Christ. Hallelujah. The hope of glory. He filling all in all. He, uh, his life manifesting through us. He preparing the remnant. Right. Hallelujah. That the knowledge of the glory of God will cover the earth and it will be revealed to all flesh according to Isaiah 45. And we shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And uh, let's go to the book of Exodus. Exodus chapter 19. Hallelujah. And this was the deliverance through the glory of God. We see how God's people in the Old Testament got delivered through the glory of God. And I'm going to explain a few things uh, later on. We'll be going into the book of Hebrews. But it says here in the third month, when the children of Israel had gone forth out of the land of Egypt, the same day they came into the wilderness of Sinai. For they were departed for Rephardim, and they were come out to the desert of Sinai, and had pitched up in the wilderness, and that there Israel camped before the mount. And Moses went up unto God, and the Lord called unto him out of the mountain, saying, Thus saith they, thou to the house of Jacob, Tell the children of Israel, Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, and how I bear you on wings of eagles, and brought you unto myself. Now therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed, and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all the people. For all of the earth is mine. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and an holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. And Moses came and called for the elders of the people and laid before their faces all these words which the Lord had commanded. 
And all the people answered together and said, All that the Lord has spoken we will do. And Moses returned the words of the people unto the Lord. Amen. And the Lord said unto Moses, Lo, I come unto thee in a thick cloud, that my people may hear, that when I speak with thee and believe thee forever. And Moses told the words of the people unto the Lord. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go into the people and sanctify them today and tomorrow, and let them wash their clothes, and be ready again against the third day. Amen? This is the third day glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But the fulfillment of this third day glory is the kingdom of God. Is Christ in us the hope of glory? Is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost? Is God filling the earth with His knowledge? Is being able to move, hallelujah, in the spirit of revelation, in the spirit of wisdom, in the spirit of knowledge, hallelujah, is being to excel prophetically in the plan of God according to the third day knowledge as Christ in us is being filled to be able to present every man perfect unto Christ, hallelujah, but we see in this Mount Sinai, there was limits on the mountain. Amen. The people were in agreement, but the people could not fully enter in to the third day glory. Amen. The glory of the kingdom of God. The glory that God is going to rule his kingdom. His kingdom is an everlasting king and all dominion, all power, all might, all glory is unto the Lord of lords and the king of kings, to the lion of the tribe of Judah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To him whose vesture in Revelation chapter 19 is dipped with blood and out of his mouth comes a double-edged sword. Hallelujah. To be able to judge the nations. Hallelujah. And out of his mouth comes the sword which is the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. And the spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus. Amen. So God says here in verse 11, Be ready against the third day, for the third day the Lord will come down in the sight of all the people upon Mount Sinai, and thou shalt set bounds unto the people, round about saying, Take heed to yourselves, that ye no go up to, into the mount, nor touch the border. Whosoever touches this mount shall be surely put to death. So God did reveal this third day glory in the book of Exodus, but the people could not partake of it. Amen? Hallelujah. That's the bad, that's the sad news. But here, hallelujah, is the good news. Amen? And it says here a little bit further on, verse 16, it came to pass that on the third day of the morning that there was thunder and lightning and a thick cloud upon the mount and the voice of the trumpet exceedingly loud so that the voice of the trumpet, amen, and all the people that were in the cramp trembled. And Moses brought forth the people out of the camp to meet with God. And they stood in, in either part of the Sinai. And the mountain was altogether on a smoke because the Lord descended upon it in fire and smoke. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And there was a great furnace and the mount quaked tremendously. Hallelujah. And the voice of the trumpet sounded long and waxed louder and louder. And Moses spake, and God answered him by voice, hallelujah, and came down upon Mount Sinai on the top of the mountain. And the Lord called unto Moses, and Moses went up. Amen? Moses went up. Moses was able, hallelujah, to be able to partially enter into that third day glory. Amen? But there was limits on this mountain. Amen? There was limits on Mount Sinai. But if we look at the Word of God, as God, through revelation, amen, is talking tonight, He's talking about the revelation, amen, of Himself, the greatest move of God, which is Christ Himself, the hope of glory, the glory that's going to fill all in all, the glory that's going to cover the earth, amen, the knowledge of the glory of God, amen, and we're moving in this knowledge, we're going past Mount Sinai, we're not going to be left on the limits of the mountain. But if we come here, amen, and we look in the book of Hebrews, <coughs> chapter 12. We look at Hebrews chapter 12. And we see here another mountain, amen? Hallelujah. And it says here, in verse 20, Moses chapter 12, verse 19. 
And it says, For ye are come unto the mount that might be touched, that burneth with fire, nor unto blackness and darkness and tempest. We're talking about Mount Sinai. And the sound of the trumpet and the voice of the words which the voice they heard entreated, and the words should not be spoken to them any more, for they could not endure that which was commanded. And if so, as bears touch the mountain, it should be stoned or thrust through with a dart. And so terrible was the sight that Moses said, I exceedingly fear and quake. Amen. We're talking about Mount Sinai, amen, where the third day glory, God revealed himself, but the people, of course, they were not ready. Christ had not died for them, amen. The blood of Jesus had not been shed. It was the blood of goats and bulls and heifers, but praise the name of Jesus. We are not saved by the blood of goats and bulls and heifers. We're saved by the blood of Jesus himself, that we can enter boldly, hallelujah, into the holy place, past the veil, hallelujah, the veil that was ripped, amen, when Christ was being crucified on the cross on the ninth hour, the veil ripped into the holy of holies, and we can come boldly unto the throne of God, hallelujah, now there's a new revelation, now we have a deeper vast into the glory of God, we have a reach now into the holy of holies, hallelujah, and here the word of God says, amen, it says, but you are come unto Mount Zion, unto the city of the living God, and the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an unnumerable company of angels. Amen? So Mount Zion is a greater revelation. It's a revelation of the glory of Christ. It is the greatest revelation because Christ himself, hallelujah, is the greatest move of God. Amen. And we are his body and his body will fill on all in all. So it's Christ in us, the hope of glory. It's this dying dimension of glory. It's this third day glory that we're talking about here in the name of Jesus. But you are come unto Mount Zion, unto the city of the living God, unto the heavenly Jerusalem, unto an unnumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and the church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven. To the God, listen to this, and of God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of the just being man being made perfect. So in this third realm of glory, in this dimension of glory, amen, there is a perfecting, amen, and we are perfected unto the standard of Christ himself, amen, Christ in us, amen, Satan come to steal, kill, and destroy, but Jesus has come to give us life, amen, and abundantly, life abundant, the Zoe life, the spirit life, amen, the life that has not been contaminated with sin, amen, the life of Christ himself, amen, in this third dimension of glory, in this dimension of Zion, amen, the greatest revelation being Christ in us, the hope of glory. So the Bible says the God, the judge of the just spirits being made perfect amen that is so powerful amen and to jesus the mediator of a new covenant and to the blood of the sprinkling that speak it better than that of the blood of abel amen hallelujah now if you refuse this revelation hallelujah look what it says here see that ye refuse not him that speaketh for if they escape not that refuse him that spake on earth, much more shall they not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven, whose voice then shook the earth. But now he has promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not the earth only, but also the heaven. And this word, yet once more, signifieth the removing of things that are shaken. What does this mean? Hallelujah! That we're entering into the third realm of this kingdom glory into the dimension of christ himself into this dimension of zion where we're being perfected where the life of christ is being hallelujah formed in us to maturity hallelujah and have things that are not that are made those the bible says yes want more signify the removing of those things that are shaken as of things that are made that those things which cannot be shaken may remain amen Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. So all this tribulation you've been going through, like a bumpy airplane ride, all of these, hallelujah, uh, trials that you've been going through, God has been shaking you, and it's not to destroy you, it's to form, hallelujah, the character and the life, hallelujah, of Christ, hallelujah, so that the realms of glory of His kingdom, of His life, hallelujah, hallelujah, of His inheritance can be deposited in you hallelujah my brother and my sister and this word yet once more signify it that removing of those things that are shaken as the things that are made that those things which cannot be shaken may remain amen and you know the rock that cannot be shaken amen his kingdom he is the cornerstone amen the bible says in ephesians 3:20, built upon the foundation of apostles and prophets but christ himself being the cornerstone which the builders rejected hallelujah revelation which was not given in other times but now is being given unto his holy apostles and prophets hallelujah this is so much greater amen that the religious people or the religious uh, religion is preaching we're preaching christ the glory of the kingdom of god this third realm of glory being able to go past see religion is like mount zion you see it but you can't enter in. Amen? You see the shaking. You see the smoke. You see the fireworks. Amen? But there's no transformation. There's never a becoming. There's never the caterpillar coming out and becoming the butterfly. Hallelujah. Because God wants to go deeper into your life. Hallelujah. God wants to shake everything that can be shaken. As the Bible says in the book of Haggai, by the prophet Haggai. Hallelujah. That when the desired one comes to live in us, that he will shake the heavens, the earth, the sea, and the dry land, and He will manifest Himself, and the latter glory of this house, hallelujah, will be greater, because Christ Himself, the head of the church, will be filling, hallelujah, the body, the fullness of all in all, and that's how He's going to cover the earth with the glory of God, hallelujah, praise the name of Jesus, hallelujah, and let's keep saying what it says, Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace, whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. Our God is a consuming fire. Amen? Hallelujah. And I believe that tonight, a lot of you, your spirit is being stirred up. You're hearing... It may be a new word. It may be a different word, but it's the word of God brought to you through the revelation, through wisdom and knowledge. How God is going to teach you through this word how to start to not only be filled with the glory of Christ, but how to start to move in the glory of Christ. As the prophet Habakkuk said, that in the last days God will cover the earth with the knowledge of the glory of God. Amen. And God himself, hallelujah, is going to bring you to this place, let's go to First Chronicles, and I believe that this word is going to bring a breakthrough in circumstances and situations that you're going through right now. Amen? And I want to speak a prophetic word over your life tonight. We find that word in First Chronicles 15.10. Amen? And it says here, First Chronicles 15, amen, or 14, I'm sorry, First Chronicles 14, uh, and it says here in verse uh, 8, it says, And when the Philistines heard that David was anointed king over all Israel, all the Philistines went up to seek David, and David heard of it and went out against them. And the Philistines came and spread themselves in the valley of Rephaim. And David inquired of God, saying, Shall I go up against the Philistines, and will thou deliver them into my hands? And the Lord said unto him, Go up, for I will deliver them into thine hands. And so they came unto Baal Perazim. Amen. And David smote them there. Then David said, God has broken up mine enemies by my hand like the breaking forth of water. Therefore they called the name of that place Baal Perazim. What does this mean? This means that God is getting ready to bring a prophetic breakthrough in your life. Amen. Now a lot of you are 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 are, are are in a place where you need that breakthrough. You need that thrust 
You need the power of God. You need to see the glory of God starting to bring prophetic breakthroughs in your life. Amen. Even as David, when he was anointed king, when it came to his time, amen, to possess the kingdom of God. Amen. The enemies, all of the five camps of the Philistines came against David. And they, they, they came to the valley refrain and they, they, they planned to, 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 to bring a conspiracy, an attack against David. But David inquired God. And tonight, hallelujah, the Bible says, call unto the Lord when he may be, and he will answer you and show you things that you know not of. And this revelation that's going forth of the glory of God, hallelujah, I pray that it become rhema in your spirit because God is going to bring deliverance to circumstances and situations. You're going to be delivered from enemies. You're going to be delivered from adverse situations and circumstances. And God is bringing you to that place called Baal Perazim, which means prophetic breakthrough. God is breaking through. God is going to humble the enemy before you. God is going to bring confusion in the enemy's camp in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Praise the name that's above every other name tonight. Praise the name of Jesus. God is good tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. And we see another place where God uh, brought forth uh, deliverance. Amen. When the house of the Lord in 2 Chronicles 7, amen, 2 Chronicles 7, and we're going to read verse 11 through 18, and it says here, it says, Thus Solomon finished the house of the Lord and the king's house, and all that came into Solomon's heart to make the house of the Lord and his own uh, house, he prosperously effected it, and the Lord appeared unto Solomon by might, and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and have chosen this place to myself. And the house of sacrifice, if I shut up the heavens, there be no rain. Or if I command the locusts to devour the land. Or if I send pestilence among my people. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray. And seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and will hear, heal their land. Amen. I will hear their land. Now my eyes shall be open and my ears attend to the prayer that is made in this place. Praise the name of Jesus. And let me tell you something. Hallelujah. We're going to continue in this revelation of the glory of God. Because this third day glory, this glory of Christ himself, which is the greatest revelation of the Bible. You, you've got to agree with me that the greatest thing in the Bible, the greatest person in the Bible... Amen. The greatest subject in the Bible is Christ. Amen. So we have to have the knowledge of the glory of God and this glory that will affect nations, this glory that's going to change and transform your life, this glory that's going to bring this bow perazim, this prophetic breakthrough and deliverance for you. Some of you are in a place where like the widow woman that had her last uh, uh, little pancake uh, to bake and she was going to eat it and die with her son. Amen. And the prophetic the prophet came, Elijah came, amen, and he said, make me a pancake first, amen. And, and, you know, a lot of the people that don't have the mind of the Lord would say, wow, that's a selfish prophet or a selfish apostle or pastor or whatever, amen. But the lady was obedient, amen. You, you cannot understand the revelation of God with a natural mind, amen. You have to have 1 Corinthians 2.16, the mind of Christ which knows all things. And the lady was obedient, and... Let me tell you something, for three and a half years she was sustained. The oil never ceased. The provision of God never, amen, uh, ran low. And she was delivered. She came to that place where prophetically she was delivered through the word of God. And I declare and decree that even as that widow woman, Azareth, was delivered, amen, and, and was a blessing unto the prophet of God, Elijah, amen, that a lot of you will be delivered, amen. And, I, and, I, and I'm, I, the area of the finances is an area where the enemy has hit strong the people of God. And now more than ever, you need to be obedient. You need to be spontaneous in obedience with God. Amen? Hallelujah. And whatever the Lord tells you to do, you need to do it. Amen? If it's to fast, fast. If it's to pray, pray. If it's to give, give. If it's to, you know, <clears throat> to comp conquer areas of your life, in your flesh, whatever it is that the Lord may be telling you. You need to be obedient. Amen? And so I want to pray tonight, and uh, I, I've been blessed by the Word of God. Uh, uh, today I was in the presence of God as I was preparing uh, this Word, 
Amen. And, and I'm really excited because we're moving into this realm, the third day glory with no limitations. Amen. In the dimension of Zion, Christ himself, the full revelation. Amen. We've come to the mountain. Amen. Where there's myriads of angels, where the assembly of the firstborn. Hallelujah. Where the judge, God, the judge of just spirits being made perfect. Amen. Hallelujah. To the blood that speaks better than the blood of Abel. And to the removing of things that can be moved. See, that's the turbulence that you've been feeling. Amen. Oh, it's the devil. Because that's what the religious spirit says. It's not the devil. Amen. I rebuke that religious spirit. Amen. It's God forming you and forging you and forming the character of Christ so that you can be part of the greatest move of the kingdom of God. Amen. This third realm, this third day glory. Amen. And I've said it before, but um, about a year and a half ago, I had a, a tremendous experience with the Lord. And uh, we were had been in, 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 uh, in fasting and prayer. One morning I wake up, I woke up and and, and I was tired because of, we had been fasting for quite a few days. And I, and, I, and I fell back to sleep for about 18 minutes. And in this revelation, Christ himself came unto me. And um, he poured a vase of this such, I, I mean, the color of this wine uh, that he poured out was so red. With The color was so rich. And he poured the wine to me. And he had a crown with diadems in this crown. And, and he gave me to drink of this wine three different times. And then I started to see this rain. And, and it, it first it started lightly, then it started very strong. And then it was like a storm where the wind blows the rain in one direction. And it was like golden rain. It was the glory of God. Amen. And I really believe that it, God was preparing me to preach this message in the nations, to preach and prepare the church. God has called me as an apostle uh, to, to equip, to train, amen, uh, to activate and to send, amen, hallelujah, and, 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 and to fulfill the great commission of going into all the world and preaching the gospel, and these signs shall follow all of those that believe. They'll lay their hands on the sick, they'll cast out devils, they'll speak with new tongues, they'll raise the dead, amen, creative miracles breaking out. It can only happen in this realm that I'm talking about. This is so much greater than the anointing amen hallelujah anointing is a little is a little bit amen but now we're talking about the full revelation of christ himself father in the name of jesus tonight we thank you lord god as we're coming to an end of this program father but we will continue lord god as god as you continue to give i will continue to impart hallelujah but father tonight in the name of jesus i ask that you would bless those that have heard your word that are hungry for your word, that want to move into this realm, that want to come out of religion and be delivered, Father. I declare bow perazim. I declare deliverance from circumstances and situations, even as you deliver the widow of Sarep, Lord God. And you deliver Elijah himself, Father God, at the river Karet, Lord God, where the clothes would come in the morning and in the evening and bring him meat, and Lord God. And, and, and his thirst was satisfied by the brook, Father, but the brook dried up. And it was time to move. And God, in every place that, that God sent the prophet, there was provision. There was blessing, not only for the prophet, but for those that became part of what God was doing through the life of the prophet, Lord God. So tonight, in the name of Jesus, Father God, Father, I break every curse, every limitation, Father, every assignment of the devil, every assignment of death and hell is broken off those that are hearing this word, Father. And deliverance is coming to the area of the mind, Father God. And Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I declare creative miracles. I declare right now, in the name of Jesus, Father God, that tonight, Father, there will be God, God, hallelujah, God, you will, you will, hallelujah, you will come to your people, even in dreams, even in visions, Father God, activate, hallelujah, the, prof the prophetic glory, hallelujah, of your people, of Joel chapter 2, of the former and the latter reign together in the first month, Lord God. Activate the prophecy, the dreams, the visions, Lord God, which is part of this prophetic glory, Father, that's coming. Activate, hallelujah, Habakkuk 2, that you will fill the earth with the knowledge of the glory of God. Activate tonight, Father, Ephesians 1.17, Father, that the God, the Lord, the Father of glory, the God of Jesus, the Father of glory, would give the spirit of wisdom and revelation and knowledge, Father, that your people would move 
in the glory of God from faith to faith and glory to glory and victory to victory, Lord God, that we would see, hallelujah, your glory in our lives, Christ in us, the hope of glory. Praise the name of Jesus. And tonight, we I thank you that one more time we're being able to connect together through this word, through this impartation. Until next week, the kingdom of God suffereth violence and only the violent take it by force. God bless you.